Have you ever considered about getting into DIY solar, but you don't really know where to begin? I thought I'd make this video to give you a basic overview of how I have created my DIY solar system and how I'm planning to actually upgrade it over time because that's the really cool thing with DIY solar. So within this overview, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own DIY solar system for as little as around, well, it's the equivalent of 400 US dollars because I know that a majority of my audience is in the United States. So right off the bat, you're going to need a battery. The battery I'm using is coming from a company called Red Odeo. I'm slowly going to be reviewing more and more different products from Red Audio because I find that their quality is really high and they're really affordable prices. So definitely have a look at those affiliate links down below if you're interested in any of the products that you see in this video. So we have the Red Audio battery. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. For those of you who are not familiar, that would be 1,280 watt hours of capacity. I've connected it up with some PV cables. So the, well, actually they're called tray cables. The tray cables go up to the MPPT charge controller, which is also from Red Audio. This Red Audio MPPT charge controller goes up to 40 amps. Now that is plenty. That's the really nice thing about this MPPT charge controller is that it's actually kind of expandable. So over time, as you grow your solar array, you can add more panels basically to the system. So we have two panels on the roof. I bought these panels secondhand. The reason I bought these panels secondhand is just mainly because of the price. Like the price was absolutely worth trying and I highly recommend having a look at the used solar panel market because you can find yourself incredible deals. I bought these two panels. I bought them for 20 euros each, which is around 20 US dollars. And each panel goes up to around 200 watts. It's a little over that, but that's on its peak performance. So two of them in, in series. I can run two of them in series, which gives me around 50 to 60 volts on a good sunny day. And then I'm getting around, well, it depends on the type of angle that you've got, but I've, I'm have i getting, my, my, right now I'm getting around 230, I think. I feel that I can sometimes get a higher performance depending on, you know, if the clouds are going by and then suddenly the sun comes through, I'll get like a much more uh, higher reading on, on the system. But I'm pretty sure at some point I should be able to get 320 watts because even on one panel, I've registered 160 watts on one panel, sometimes even up to 180 on one panel. I'm really happy with that so far. It means my battery charges really quick and the panels cost me such a little amount of money. I'm very happy about that. I built the structure which holds the panels which I've fixed to my roof. I've built that structure out of some repurposed wood. It doesn't last as long as metal obviously but wood doesn't cost anything especially if you get it for free. So that's something you want to consider is the cost and you can easily replenish the wood once you find new bits of pallets. You can also use pallets as well. So we've got the panels on the roof. They're pumping the, the power down through the PV cables that go into the charge controller. I bought these cables uh, secondhand on Amazon. The thing is, for the cables, it can vary from country to country where you get your cables from. I will leave some links down below for what cables I can recommend. But at the same time, you've got to have a look at them. Just go go for Amazon. And then if you type in PV cables, preferably with a fuse in between, you will find what you're looking for. Again, you're gonna need tray cables. Tray cables will connect from your battery to the MPP charge controller. Make sure that you connect your battery first to the charge controller, then your panels. And then once you've connected everything up, positive to negative, obviously, you're gonna need your inverter. Now, for the demonstrational purposes, I've decided to use my solar generator, which has an 850 watt inverter built in, into it. So actually what's interesting with this setup is that you're able to have an expansion on your battery and also an inverter. And on the solar generator, you can get DC ports, which don't obviously come exactly with the battery. You'll need to buy that as an accessory uh, if you want to have like a DC hub where you connect up USBs and stuff like that. So this is the, the benefit actually of having a solar generator coming after the battery. I am planning to do a review on one of the inverters which come from Red Audio. I'm planning to review one of their 2000 watt inverters, but you could easily go for their 1000 watt inverter and that would be roughly the same as using this solar generator, which again, this solar generator goes up to 850, but if you get a separate inverter, that'll cost you around 100 bucks. Now for demonstrational purposes, I have connected my induction stove to 
the inverter. Just to give you an idea of how that works, I put in a little over a liter of water into this pan. Interestingly, these induction stoves can actually go up to 2000 watts, but you can bring them down. And as long as you bring them down to around the same level as your inverter, you can actually use them to cook whatever you want. Roughly to cook a liter of water, which I, I, I put 200 milliliters over that, but roughly to do a liter of water, it takes about 10 to 11 minutes on 850 watts. And I'm really curious about connecting up all sorts of different appliances. I've got garden equipment. I've got even like a washing machine that I could even connect up because that's what a 2000 watt inverter can do. How much does it all cost? Well, if you add everything up, the battery is about 150 if you buy it like, like new, but if you want to buy it brand new, it's about 167, $160 at the moment. The cables I bought secondhand, you can get those for around like, let's say $30. The panels were about $20 each. So that's $40 for the two panels. The inverter is going to run you around a hundred bucks. And then the MPPT charge controller will be another, let's say, $100. So for around 400 bucks, you can get a substantial solar system, really, for only 400 bucks, which is really, I find that to be fantastic. If you're getting into doing this, I will be doing possibly a how-to demonstration in the next video following on from this. But this is just going to be for beginners to getting into this, showing them just a basic overview of how that all works. This is actually quite simple to do. Please like the video if you appreciate this content. So that is a basic overview for beginners on this DIY solar system using this battery and MPPT charge controller from Red Odeo. Again, links will be down in the description in case you're interested in having a look at those.